What's going on, Badger fans? Wisconsin got another commit for the 2025 class. It's been a minute. Let's sound the cannons. Let's talk about something uh, that's not related to basketball. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. I uh, really do, as always, appreciate you guys tuning in, joining the show, being part of the community. Today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things just a little bit? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada. Go find your next big adventure. Check them out today at NissanUSA.com. Justin, man, it, is, it has been a while since we hit this button. Fire the recruiting cannons. Another one is headed to Madison on Wisconsin. I just want to say this. I'm really proud of you. It only I, played once. I didn't double clutch it. You're, do, you're doing better there, son. Listen, the, get real one, done. the real ones who have been with us for a while will get that reference. The real ones, the real <laughs> ones will get it. Um, all right, so let, let's talk about the newest commit. And Justin, you and I were kind of talking before the show, uh, primarily on the film, but also how to pronounce the name. So I'm going to give the best shot I got, but I apologize in advance. This Samuel Latou, Lajou, Le, Le, Le I'm not 100% Le sure. Two, it's probably Latou. We'll go Latou. Okay. If we're wrong on this, I I sincerely apologize. I feel like I'm going to butcher it. You know, I feel like that's not it, but yeah. I don't know how else to do it. We um, are the two worst people out there at being the ones to try and sp to sound this out. Yeah. But regardless, right, so Samuel Latou, 6'5", 220 pounds, uh, Nominally listed as an outside linebacker out of the Lawrenceville school out of New Jersey. If that name sounds familiar, uh, Raphael Dunn last year, mm -hmm. uh, and last year cycle out of that same school. So that's kind of an interesting little connection there. Um, I did actually text Dunn after this commitment and he said, Latou's great energy guy, vocal leader, plays hard, like had just glowing things to say about himself. So pretty cool. Um, reported offers from West Virginia, Wake Forest, Syracuse, Syracuse, Duke, Boston College, among others, composite three star player. Um, most impressively, when you look at it, six foot five, two hundred twenty pounds. I think he's more like two thirty. He looks bigger than two twenty uh, on the film. I agree with that. Yeah, like he looks like two twenty five, two thirty. Maybe he's gonna carry bigger. weight in college. Yeah. He's, he's he's not going to be a two hundred forty pound linebacker. Mm -hmm. No. Um, Just why don't you start? Um, we're we're going to put the film up here as well. And if you have any comments, let us know. So we'll put the film up. But Justin, um, thoughts on the film? Early impressions of Latou? Well, first thing I want to say is this guy has only been playing for a couple of years. So there's a couple of things to take away from that. Now he's 230 now. This is a guy who probably from a physical development standpoint, there's a chance he could put on a lot of muscle if this is if he's only got two years under his belt. Now he's got a good frame as it is. I see watching him a guy that I look at that is a straight up pass rusher. I, I don't love him in space because I don't think he's a super twitchy fluid guy in terms of being able to really drive on his feet, but I do see a guy when I look at him as a pass rusher that I'm like, he is quick enough that he's going to get on top of people. And I, I project him that he's going to be a, a guy who's going to put on some muscle. He's going to be strong. He looks like he's going to be a bull at the college level. Yeah. And that's going to be a big deal. Cause we have not had guys like that. Like I think TJ Watts, the only guy you'd really look at that's that type of player. I think TJ might've been a little bit lighter on his feet than, than the two is right now, but it's that similar type of player where I think that he's going to be able to just flat out, just punch people and rock them with how strong I think he's going to be by the time he gets 20 or 30 pounds on him. I love he's the really going to be good in the run game too. I think I, I absolutely love the frame like six, five, two thirty. He's going to carry 20, 30 more pounds. Probably like he looks at it, it's lean. It's mean. I like the long arms. He, he feels like a guy's going to win with leverage. He's mm -hmm. going to win with power. Right, he's going to get on the outside shoulder of an offensive lineman and keep him at bay with those long arms and that power. I think he can set the edge. Yeah. Uh, this this feels like a guy who gives you physicality at the line of scrimmage, who gives you the ability to rush the passer. Yeah. Uh, a bunch of clips on here where you know he gets blocked or he he gets walled off and he gets back into the play. Like the motor is super evident in these, and you can tell. Like you can tell on film, guys who just keep running to the ball. Mm -hmm. That's a skill. That's something some players never develop. It looks like he already has that. I think this, I mean, we talk about this staff a lot, right? They're looking for certain types. They're looking for people who you can project upwards, who you get, and the ceiling is high. 
this is a guy like that, six foot five, two thirty with power. Um, yeah, I, I like this pickup a lot, and I think to your point, I think you made a really good one. He gives this defense potentially something they don't have. I know before the show you had mentioned Aaron Witt. He could be that type of Aaron Witt guy that we've been waiting on Aaron Witt to be healthy for. Yeah. The guy that when we watch Aaron Witt's, Witt's film out of high school, you're like, this is a 6'6 dude that actually he comes with a like he comes downhill quick. And I think that he has some of that as a pass rusher. Uh the other thing that I'll say about him is that I think this is a guy, because he is so new to this and his instincts, I think that the violence is gonna come with him. Like, I think he's going to be a guy whose hands get a lot better, especially when they teach him to attack half man a little bit more. That's going to look a lot more aggressive and a lot more violent as a pass rusher coming down. And I think he's actually pretty good already for a guy who's really raw. So once he understands how to play with leverage a little bit more and how to attack where you're not straight up going into a guy's chest, he's going to be really good. Yeah, and he's already got a few things. Um, yeah. You mentioned half man. Uh, talk to me. What What do you mean by half man? And, and sure. the, when they say attack a half a man, your goal is you don't want to attack a guy straight up. Your goal is to get on his shoulder so that he can't get the angle on you, and you're basically attacking him one arm, two arms on one. So your your goal is to get underneath him or get over him, and not have him be able to square you up as a blocker to be able to get his hands on your chest and and take you out of the play. When you're yeah. so basically the goal is to simply not allow them to be able to get their hands on you. And that's yeah, the really good pass rushers are amazing at it. That's what I loved about Fitzgibbon's films. He does an excellent job of it. And he, there's a couple clips in here where he already does that. There's also a couple clips where he's able to shed to the inside. Uh he has a couple moves already. It's not just so many people at this level, it's just I'm gonna run into the guy and see if I can just push him over. Yep, exactly. They they straight up want to just out physical a guy, and it's like, no, play. Yeah, it's physics. Like, just sit there and play. You you want to have as little energy expelled as you possibly can on a play to to win. Yep, and he's got a he's got some of that. Um, again, though, I th I think this is totally just an upside play with the frame. This is a guy you get in the program. You you basically put him in strength and conditioning for a year for two years, and then you have a six foot five, mm -hmm. maybe six foot six, two hundred fifty five pound guy who can quite frankly win in a couple different ways at the line of scrimmage. I, I think he's much more of a hand in the dirt, rushing the passer to your point. I don't think he's going out in the little hook zones. I don't think he's covering receivers on arrow, running backs on arrow routes. I don't think he's that type of defender. I think he's going to be disruptive at the line of scrimmage and create havoc in the backfield. Um, John Berger says 6'5", 240, which is the reported time on huddle, by the way, is the 4840. Not fast enough to chase down quarterbacks or cover slot guys. That's plenty. For a guy with his frame, four eight's good. Uh, if you can get him faster than that, which with a couple of years in strength and conditioning, I wouldn't be shocked if he, he picks up a tenth. He might yeah. even pick up two. And if he gets down to the four six range as a guy with that kind of size, he's going to be a monster. Well, my first thought was seeing the four eight was I bet you he gets to four seven, and then if he's yeah. four seven six five two sixty, that's plenty fast enough. Yeah. I also don't think he's he's not the guy that's going to be covering slot guys. Like that's he's not gonna, his like, role in this defense. Long term, I look at him and I I see a guy who I think if he makes the NFL, he's going to be an oversized uh, three four or three four backer, or he's going to be a guy who's going to be a four three defensive end. Because um, I think that that's okay. probably where the physical tools actually, and that's what he's going to be for us. Like I don't see him as a guy who's going to be dropping in coverage very often, unless you're you're just playing being tricky in your defense. He's a yeah. guy who I think that you want rushing the passer because he projects well in that role. Like he's, I think he's going to be a problem once he gets his leverage down and and his flexibility and athleticism down. I think he's going to be a problem for tackles. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it's power and leverage with him. Kyle says, "What's up, Ryan? What's up, Kyle? What's up, friend?" All right, we're going to take a quick break, uh, friends of the show, for our friends of the show. We're going to come back, and we're going to talk just a little bit about the 2025 class. Who is Justin's favorite commit in the class so far? Who is mine? What is still the biggest position of need in that 2025 class? We're going to talk about that next on Locked on Badgers. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show um, and new friends of the show over at Nissan Motors. Um, Nissan Motors is really the number one place um, if you're looking for it. I mean, honestly, if you're looking to create a little attention in your life, if you're the type of driver – that wants to get out and see what's around that next curve, go over to Nissan Motors USA, NissanUSA.com. It is the number one place, whether you're driving the Rogue, the Armada, whatever it is, if you have a small family, a big family, 
Nissan's got you covered in every single possible way with their, their incredible vehicle lineup. The 2024 Nissan Armada, uh, full-size SUV, 4x4, rugged, seats up to 8, first-class luxury. Listen, if we ever get a group of people together, we're going to take the Armada down to Madison. We're going to game day down there. We fit eight Badger fans in there. It's going to be incredible. We're going to do that in the Nissan Armada. Take the Rogue, the Pathfinder, or the Armada. Go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. All right, Justin, let, let's talk 2025 recruiting. So eight commits in the class. Um, I, I wanted to start off with who are a couple of your favorites? I, I think I already probably know, but who are a couple of your favorites in this class so far? Well, Cody Haddad. I, yeah, I absolutely I, love his film. He, he is a stick your face in the fan. He's so fast and so athletic and is so instinctual for a guy at that position. Like I, I love him as a safety. He's got – I think that he's going to be a slightly smaller version of what we have already with uh, – oh, man. Why can't I think of his name right now? Safety. Um, Wollers. Or, or Wooler. Um, I think he's going to be a little smaller than him, not maybe quite as physical, but I think he's going to be faster. And he's going to be a guy who can really come downhill. And I think he actually ha- – he projects really well on the back end for being able to, to drop and, and play center field. So he can do a little bit of everything. I really like his film. I he's a guy. I, it will really bum me out if we if Ohio State somehow pulls him away, because I see a ton of upside with him. Like we're talking all conference type center fielder type safety with him, who can do a little bit of everything. Um, Brandon Ains, I absolutely love the film. That's the second one I knew you'd go to. I he he is the closest thing. That he. He fits so many of the guys that we've seen be absolute studs at outside backer that I, I just look at him and I'm like, I will be so shocked if this guy does not turn into an absolute beast in college. And to think if you find like if he's here long enough, him and Tackett on the field at the same time. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> that linebacker group. Good lord. It's gonna be fun. And with with guys like Sebastian Cheeks in there as well, yeah. and Rafaele and Heiberger. I'm just saying it could be a lot of fun there, Justin. No, oh, yeah. Always- the athleticism in that linebacking group yeah. is going off the charts. And I love, like, from a coverage standpoint, just some of the things that he can do. And he's so instinctual that he's another guy that I look at and I'm like, they, he's their way off on his on his score right now. Like, he's he's going to end up a composite four-star guy to me. I, I think it's it's really obvious. You know he's the lowest rated composite in the world. Yes, and it's, it's crazy. Like, yeah. that to me, I look at that film, I'm like, this guy's – He's in a 90, 91 to me. Like, I would even go as high as 92, 93. Like, I think I'm that high on his film, watching what I saw him play. And it, you agreed with me. Like, he's a freak he's awesome. out there. So he's one of my – if I if I have a couple, Ains is on my list. I, I think the, fil- the film – just do yourself – even if – because a lot of people don't like watching high school recruiting film, huddle film, which is totally understandable. His is so much fun to watch. Just go watch his, though. Like, if you're even a person who's really not into it, go watch Brendan Ains. And just tell me that's not enjoyable. Like his film is awesome, so mm-hmm. he's definitely on my list. I think there's an explosive quality to his game that's going to translate. Uh, Remington Moss is is another guy on my list. Mm-hmm. I like the size, I like the versatility, I like the athleticism. There's a there's another guy when you start adding it into these DBs they've gotten. Justin Remington Moss fits into that group of size. He's he's as physical a guy as we brought in. Uh, on kind of on that. Oh, yeah, we, we don't have guys like that normally at Wisconsin. He hits people. He's a big dude. Yeah, and he hit. He, he, he'll bring the wood. So yeah. yeah, he's a guy that I. He has so much versatility to him. Like I, I know they they plan on him potentially playing some corner, but even if he's not, like him as a downhill safety, yeah, he's he's definitely got the physicality to play it. Even as a corner, he's a guy that if you play him in bump and he gets his hands on somebody, they're not going anywhere. Like he's going to control that matchup. I think he's a safety, though. I, I, I think I, as a corner, he's going to get – it might be a His little technique tougher. technique will now. really have to be um, incredible for him to be. I, I think he's a downhill safety who is also going to give you some coverage from that spot. Which yeah, I, think that's I, I would agree with that. Um, so those two. And then I want to talk about the quarterback because I think you and I differ. I, I actually – I need to go back and watch it. Um, but – I, I'm not even saying we differ. I just think more more looks are, are necessary here. I I, I really like Landon Locke with what I've seen. Um, and I know we talked about it. You like him too. It's it's not that. But I think there are some questions with arm strength, maybe um, questions with 
tools compared to a guy like Metoyer, which I think are interesting to dive into. Yeah, I, I mean, I look at it and that, I mean, that's the ultimate, like when you look at Matoyer, that's, that's what he is. Like he's got all the physical tools you could ask for. Yeah. So it's really hard to say, like I watched, I went back and watched the film on, on Landon and I think the arm is solid for the college level, but I think he's a guy who's going to get by more on accuracy at the next level. Like I don't necessarily as of right now, see the RPMs to watch him throw the deep out. Great. I just don't, he's a guy who's going to really have to rely on anticipation. Um, because I don't think he can get away with trying to fit it in there late on a ball. Um, there's a couple of throws, if you watch his film, where I think he lets it hang a little bit when he throws the deep ball. And that's something that he's going to have to be able to drive the football down there because corners will make up ground at the college level. It's not like high school where if a guy gets beat, you have all day to just chuck it up and, and let your guy come down with it. In college, you have corners that are running a 4-4 and – that step disappears real quick if your guy has to adjust to the ball at all. So let me, let me ask you this: he, to me, he feels like a toolsier version of Braden Locke, in a way. Yeah, I think that's fair. I, 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 would, I would agree with that. I, the, the biggest thing that I saw on a lot of his throws watching the film is he throws off his back foot a lot. That's going to have to get better. He's going to have to step into his throws, and I think that that will take care of some of the arm questions that I have because you have to use your legs. You have to push off that back leg and, and get forward and, and drive through the football. And he's got good, really good timing on his throws. Like there's very few of the throws when I watch him on his film where you're looking at it, where it seems like it's mistimed and he's, he's just a little off. It always seems like he knows where he's supposed to be going with the football. And the guys typically like to his credit, their offense, there are a lot of guys running free. So it's from an accuracy standpoint, he's on time and on target. I don't really know what I'm looking at with him when it comes to what is a change, how, what changes when he's throwing into tighter windows. How does that affect him as a quarterback when suddenly a guy's right on top of his receiver and he's got to throw him open? That's something I need to see with him a little bit more. Yeah, to me, I think he's got kind of an intangible bonus too. His older brother is obviously Braden Locke at Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. um, the coach, I've, I've talked to the head coach, both of them, he, he talks about him like, I mean, they are gym rats. They're always on, on the film. They're always on the I trust board. that. I definitely They're trust that. They're always breaking stuff down. Like, we, you and I both know this, man. There's nothing more. Everything on a quarterback's important, right? Legs are important. Arms are important. Size is important. But there's nothing more. what happens when you don't have legs. Well, there's Wisconsin. nothing more important we than didn't, we didn't, years, though. We never recruited legs here for probably 15, 20 years. And we haven't. But it was a huge more, disadvantage. But nothing's more important than what's between the years. Oh, yeah. Right? And – I think he's going to have that in a slightly better frame than Braden Locke. And Braden Locke was good enough to jump to number two in the depth chart his first, yeah. like right away. So I think that's where I kind of go with Landon. I think it might be like Braden 1.5. And if that's the case, he's going – he's got a good shot because especially if Phil Longo is still the offensive coordinator whenever yeah. – and you never know. But the, the only other thing I would say on him is I'm very curious to see how he matures. Um, he's got a very thin frame right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's a guy that – I'm not sure you're ever going to see him get you – know, like he's 6'3", almost 6'4". I'm not sure you're going to see him at 225. Now, maybe you will, but I think he's like at 180 now, 185. That's a big jump to go up that much weight. And obviously they're going to have him in a strength conditioning program where they're going to pack on pounds on him. But I think he's probably going to be a guy that's closer to like the 215, 210 range as a quarterback. Mm -hmm. So he's a guy I'm not sure is ever going to be super, you know – comfortable with him taking a lot of big hits Dur durable maybe yeah. yeah no that's important too like as, as we've said many times the best ability is availability um mm -hmm. and a bigger frame definitely allows you to absorb more contact more punishment all right we're gonna take a quick break we're gonna come back 12 2025 class what are the biggest needs and i'm not even necessarily talking prospects but we can certainly get into a couple that you're eyeing but like what what does this class have to still hit on uh, going forward. We're going to do that next on Lockdown Badgers with Justin from the Bucky Report. But first, a uh, quick break for our friends of the show over at FanDuel. Justin, uh, you can still futures on uh, Wisconsin Badgers College Basketball Final Four. Um, national Championship. What year? Like 2027 or what? <laughs> Listen, you get, you get really good odds now, actually, if you want to take a few a few dollars over at FanDuel.com slash locked on, slide it great guards way. If you want to, I'm just saying, the odds are great. I, th I don't think he's hurting for dollars. No, this is true. <laughs> um, if you did want to. You should be sliding a few dollars my way. Yeah. I mean, he can afford it. 
Uh, if you do want to have some futures action over on college basketball, it doesn't have to be the Badgers. Whoever you think is going to do well in March, you can do that over at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Great new offer for uh, new uh, customers over at FanDuel. Bet $5 money line bet. Win or lose, you get 115 bonus bets. Win or lose, that's a ton of cash that you can use to have more fun over at FanDuel. Please do it responsibly as always. But futures, parlays, teasers, spreads, every sport you can think of over there at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of the LockedOn Network, the NFL, and uh, the National Basketball Association. And by the way, the NBA Finals are coming up. Maybe maybe you want to take that money and put it on the Bucks futures. That's probably... That one's looking a little more promising. Yeah, that's a smarter play. <laughs> um, all right, let's pause there. Justin, let's talk 2025 class. Um, and kind of, we talked some of what we like about it. Where does this class have to hit still? And I'll just, I'm going to start on the obvious one, man. Like, you got to get two defensive linemen. And two, you need four defensive linemen. I, I wanted to say like three or four, but I'm, is that too much? I mean, we didn't, we couldn't no. do that last year. I mean, I, I think it depends guys. on what you're looking for in terms of, of what, I, if you're looking at two impact guys, I, I would agree with that. I Ideally to me, the way this class should, should line up for defensive line, because I think we're just not to the point where we can start grabbing studs. I would like to see them get two guys with really strong floors who have solid ceilings. That, give me, that give me a bad example of, of that. Like, what's what's a badger example of really high floor? Like, a, I a I think we right now we have Fitzgibbons that is a guy that they're they're going after. I really think that he's going to be a productive player in college, watching his film. Um, and going the other way, a guy who you're looking at with raw tools, that may be a high upside play. I think Petaway is a guy who I think has a lot of upside. I just it's it's not there yet. You can see the tools. But you're like this. This is a guy that needs to be shaped, and that's that's where I think to me you need two guys that you know are probably going to be able to fit into your your two deep, and it will be productive for you. And then you can get some guys that you think if these guys hit, you're looking at NFL guys that are going to be, you know, first three rounds on the defensive line. So you're wanting four bodies there because I don't think they're going to yeah. get four. I think you need four bodies. That room is still being rebuilt. Like you can get to the point. In my opinion. We should never have more than or less than three guys in a cycle unless we have guys that are just sticking around. And at that point, you have to kind of take a look at the room and say, why are these guys not good enough to be moving on? That's so, a, then that's a failure on our part to not identify talent for guys that can go move up early. Well, because ideally you want guys three years unless they're kind of a tweener or trying to bump their draft right. stock. Or, 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 or there's always random one-offs, like a dude that's been hurt or you yeah. know, somebody who came into the portal late, whatever it is. Um, but interesting side, not interesting side note, but side note on this, Gio Pia's entered the portal today um, using his sixth year to go somewhere else, defensive line depth. I mean, certainly not somebody we were counting on to be an impact player there, but that is a... I, that I'm is curious a if he's got that up. It, I, so I know from what we've heard, Jamel Howard has had a good offseason. Mm -hmm. um, I know Ernest Willer has shown up ready to play. Um, mm -hmm. so it's definitely possible he got passed up even then. And Neil, Neil, Neil started the bowl game. Neil's interesting. Um, he's a little undersized, but I'm curious yeah, what they feel they can get out of him. He had a huge stop on fourth and fourth and one in the bowl game. Like was it was either third and one or fourth and one? I forget, but he had a huge stop. Fourth in that game. We had yeah. a couple fourth down stops in that. So like, obviously if he can take another step and one in the next year, it's great. But I, I think we're on the same page defensive line in this class. They have to hit on a couple guys. What's another spot? this class they have to hit on that they haven't done yet up to this point? Um, I think we need to continue to rebuild the the tight end room. I did a really good job this last cycle, but until you have somebody who's a stud there, like I think that that is still a position in college football that is undervalued. And and we, we see that because we see teams like Notre Dame and Iowa and Penn State find guys that turn into NFL guys that are stars. And – I think that we can recruit with any of those schools at that particular position. It's a, it's a position where you identify somebody who's really athletic and you, you, you basically want to showcase them because most schools don't showcase the tight end. And yeah. that's where your opportunity is to, to kind of make a play there. Um, if we can find somebody who can become a difference maker at that position, our offense will get exponentially better moving forward. Yeah, I think tight end's a good one. I, I love what they did in last year's class with Booker mm -hmm. and Stack, but I think tight end, they need to keep building there. I'm right there with Steve Mitchell, um, big receivers. I, I just, one, like, 
one kind of big boundary receiver that can go with, with some jets with the depth yeah. that we kind of built into the slot, right? With with Henry and with Tretch and with Pauling for another, I mean, probably for one more year. Um, but um, KBJ from last year, Conbury Johnson's also kind of that inside slot potential guy. I think they need to find a guy with jets. And even if it's a raw dude, somebody with physical, like a Quincy Burroughs type, yeah. a raw physical guy who can run a deep vertical. And in two years, maybe you develop, he develops into that scratch off lottery take where you're like, oh, like nailed it. But you got to get some bodies there that have that type of physical prototype. I, I agree with that. And this staff has done a pretty good job of being able to identify that a little bit. And listen, you might find the kid who is a four or five guy in high school that you look at the frame and you're like, man, we put 15 pounds of muscle on this kid. He's going to be at four, three, like the Twitch is there. Mm -hmm. We've got to get him physically developed to the point where it really showcases. And that's what happened with Burroughs. Like we're now seeing him as probably the fastest guy on our roster. If you're doing it, you're not going to get the guy who's already running a four, four that is showing up as a four high, four star, five star guy at that position. We've got to find a way to get a guy who is probably a little undervalued that we can turn into a star. And that's, that's how Wisconsin starts finding some, starts getting some guys in the door there where we get to up our game a little bit with the type of guys we bring in. Because if you have a guy like Burroughs who comes out this year, say he wins the starting position. Well, if he goes out there and has 40 catches for 850 yards and seven touchdowns this year. That'd be a great year. Yes, it would. I mean, I don't yeah. mean, the yardage might like yeah. that would be over that'd be over 20 yards of catch. That'd yeah, be a little say, that's like 20 yards of catch. Yeah. But if you could get him in the 17 or 18 yards per catch, sure. which I think that's what you're looking for from that type of receiver, that's huge for an offense like this. And that's where you kind of can showcase things. And you have a quarterback, to be quite honest, that that is his oh, he's his gonna throw it. skill is being able to yeah. throw the deep ball. Ben Dyke's gonna let it roll. I, I'd say this too. Um and we talk about this all the time when Brian comes on the show, like the talent on the outside needs to be upgraded receiver, cornerback, cornerback and defensive back. This staff has done a pretty good job of, of upping that talent. They, they brought in good athletes receivers still been a bit of a struggle, right? And we've seen, it's not all been on Gorbeck. It wasn't all on Mordecai. There are receivers, you know, um, Jim Ray oh, yeah. DK couldn't get off press coverage. CJ Williams struggled getting open. Bryson green struggled winning 50, 50 balls. Skylar bell dropped a bunch of passes, Justin, like, mm. The, the receivers did not help the quarterbacks last year outside of Pauling. And I think they're going to be better next year, but you got to keep upgrading that room because otherwise you play a team like Ohio state and they just blank. We're, we're not, we're not pumping out a bunch of draft picks there. I mean, right now I think you'd say Pauling is going to get drafted. If he has another year, like yeah, this last year, somebody will pick him up as a slot guy. I don't know where he'd go in the draft, but I think the skill set's there for him. Anybody else in that room, I do not look at and say that this person's a lock to get an opportunity to go to the next level. So, Maybe Tretch is probably the other one I'd say. I, I'm, you know, I couldn't be higher on him. Like I we think he's going to follow Pauling, and I think he has a chance to possibly even one up him by the time he's done. I just think he's so incredible in space that he's going to be a problem. But it is fair to point out, like we don't fully know yet. We have to yeah. see it. He and hasn't done Pauling. enough that we can look at him right. and say, like Pauling gave us a year now. Yeah, legitimately, I think Pauling has an opportunity. He did most of his damage in like eight weeks, something like that. Pauling's really good. So, Pauling's going to get picked. Yeah, he's You're got Pauling. a chance to be a thousand-yard receiver this next year. I actually think yeah. he will be. Yeah, Pauling's going to get picked. Uh, give me one more spot. So we talked tight end, receiver, defense line, if, if there is. Like, if you think that's really kind of it, now we've also addressed quarterback. we got secondary coming in. we got linebackers coming I want to see another running back get stacked on this. I, and there were a lot of people that were upset that that Isaiah West went to Kentucky. That's all, yeah. And, and I watched the film, and I liked the film. I think he's a good back, and he has – there's a lot of potential there. I don't think he's as good as Dupree and and uh, Dylan Jones. So while I look at it and people were bummed about it, I'm like, I ideally you want somebody that's going to push those two. I'm not necessarily sure that he's a guy that was going to do it. I think he would have been a really nice backup to them. But unless you have somebody that's going to be a freak show – it's not a huge loss. Like they're, they're looking to find somebody that shows something that adds to the kind of repertoire for the, the running back room. And I don't know that he was necessarily going to, I think he was a Jack of all trades guy. Not, not necessarily a master. Like I looked at him as kind of being a bigger Chesma Lucy. Like he was a little bit ahead of the curve from a development standpoint. I think he had good speed, not great. I think that he was a guy who was physical. I think he had, 
good twitch and shifty feet, but I didn't see a guy who is like, when we look at Dupree, the way he moves, like that's freak show. Like he, he makes people look stupid out there. Jones is a guy that I think just is as a one cut runner is such a gifted player. And I think he has a little more burst than what West had. So when I look at it, I want to see them find somebody. And I think that running back is one of those positions where a lot of the times you don't know totally what you're getting with a running back until you get him in the room. Like yeah. We've seen guys that were like high three stars that suddenly turn into it. It happens all the time in college where a guy ends up getting drafted to the NFL that was playing, you know, in the Southwest Conference or something like, you know, these, these goofy little conferences – and they end up having a 10 year pro career where they run for eight or eight, 800 or a thousand yards a year. And it's like, how did this guy get missed? Well, he's probably running a four, six when he got to college, got in the strength and conditioning program, dropped it down to a four five mm-hmm. and became a really gifted runner. Yeah. They can definitely use more depth there because I think, I really think after the spring or going into this year, you're going to see some bodies leave that room. That's just my gut yeah. take on it. But I think there is a need for more depth there. Uh, I'll give you another one. And this is kind of what I'll finish on. I thought last year was a really good job starting to retool the offensive line. I would like to see another mauler on the inside. Cause I, I just think the inside of our line, the guards, the centers, that's been a spot where for years we just tried to stick t- tackles, right? We, yeah. we tried to stick guys that were just long and athletic. We need to keep building some, some interior depth. Because I don't know if Durant is that guy. Um, I like Mandel. I think Mandel's at least a couple years out, though. I like Corey. Um, but I, I want more depth there on the interior offensive line. I'm really excited to see how, how uh, Blazek uh, recruits. So I'm curious to see offensive line. We got Resky in the fold, but that's a tackle. I want to see some more interior guys coming in that are interior guys. That are I involved. agree with that. I think I want to see what it looks like with a really strong middle of the line. At mm. Wisconsin. It's, it's been, been a, a bit. Yeah, it's been a minute. I agree. All right, guys, we're going to wrap up there again. Um, good news today. Even though in the chat, y'all couldn't keep it off guard. I see you, Bo. I see you winning, Gambler. I see you, John Berger. Um, but I get it. Like, we're definitely going to talk a bunch more guard. I've got some bangers of guests coming up this week. I'm really excited about it. We got um, a national recruiting expert coming on. We got um, Latou's head coach coming on tomorrow, Napoleon Sykes. We'll, we'll talk about that Lawrenceville connection. I think we have a division, um, a college coach, basketball coach coming on this week, kind of talk a little bit about Greg Guard and the rotations and the adjustments. So a lot coming up this week. I'm really excited for it. Justin, um, great live show the other day. I watched it over the Buckley Report. As always, you guys are putting out tremendous content. Um, definitely give you a second. If people don't follow you, where can people find your work? I'm, I mean, everyone's. I think everyone knows, but give you the floor for a second here too. Yeah, it's at Bucky Report JJ for my Twitter. And then it would just be, you know, look us up on – Wherever you get your podcast, it's just the Bucky Report. You need to say that with more. It's not just the Bucky Report. It's the it, mother truck. It's the Bucky, Bucky Report. Report. That's right. <laughs> Let's go. Anyway, on Wisconsin, we sounded the cannons. Let's go. We'll talk tomorrow.